top. So I have a pretty good shape here. This is what I'm looking for, this kind of like angle. Um, I did go and do a little smoothing like this just with my fingers while supporting it on the inside in that upward motion. And I also went back and forth. But now I'm ready for the serrated rib. This is a really important step. We talked about it briefly with pinch um, earlier on. But when you do this, you're compressing and you're creating lines. Are you recording that, Jordan? Okay, go ahead and record that. This clay is almost leather hard, but not quite. And because of the size of the pot I'm making, it's also close to a half inch thick. So you have that, then use your smooth metal rib and make sure it's clean on the edges. This is not just about looks, it's about strength. But if I waited too long to do this, if this becomes too firm, it's going to be much harder to smooth it out. Still a compression, I'm not scraping away the clay. You can go into a couple different directions as well. Alright, there's also one strategy that the serrated rip helps with. It helps you identify dents and bumps. So if I take the clay, I can tell there's a little dent here, and if I scratch across the surface, do you see how it did not touch the clay there? That means that is a dent, and that is a bump, right? So, what could I do? I could continue to do this strategy. If it's close, that would be fine. But another move is simply, you go on the inside, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to support the clay here, and then on the inside I'm going to push it out there. So I'm alternating my pressure to even out bumps. So I could do it the same on the opposite direction if I had somewhere I wanted to move in. Also from the direction I'm standing, I'm looking down the angle of the pot visually and it makes it easier to see those bumps. The bumps might be harder to see looking from a distance. So if you're looking down the wall of the pot, you're going to see those a little bit more easily. You're going to refine that. Adding on clay, additional clay, you can see that the rim height on this is not perfectly level, right? That's okay. It's equal thickness, and the angles are what I wanted. I want this to grow just a little bit taller, and then I want it to be level. There's two strategies. One strategy is you can score and slip a coil, probably even a fatter coil than this, on the rim. Once you attach that, you smooth it down, just like we did on Adele's, and then you can pinch it up. And then once that sets up a little bit, you can do it again and again, and you can build almost infinitely. But you use a fat enough coil so that when you pinch it, and it gets thinner, it becomes the thickness you want it to be. Whereas mine right now is almost the thickness of my clay. Do I have much clay to pinch? Not really. So you would do a thicker coil if you're using that strategy. Um, the one that I want to show you, though, is what was in, yeah, this was in the book scan, so I have soft clay, I just started to squeeze into a longer coil, but for this I'm squeezing it, not rolling it. I need it to be able to fit around there on the inside. So we're just going a little longer. And then what I'm going to do with that, start to smooth it out. Now, if you're doing this on the bare desk, that's fine, but you have to flip it over frequently or it'll get stuck. Now for this, I'm getting close to the wall thickness of the clay that I want. This is going to go on to the inside. So for that, I'm going to score. This is sort of a hybrid between the two. Slip.
And since this is pretty soft clay, I'm going to overlap that sort of in between. So now on the inside, I'm smoothing it, and as I smooth it down, you notice this wall is moving out to meet kind of the diameter of the other wall. If I have any low spots like this, I could just fill that in with a little bit of soft clay that I might have around. So I'm smoothing down on the inside, which is also compressing it. By using the banding wheel, though, I'm able to keep my hand in one spot and just turn the clay. Now, I have this little seam here. So for that, if both sides of the clay were soft, and if this was thick enough, I could just smooth up and down. But it's actually not soft enough for that. So in order to do this, I'm going to roll a thinner coil. Really soft clay, though, is what I want. So with that on the inside here, I am going to use my scoring tool. See how that fills in the crack slightly? I can reach in a way my fingers couldn't. Helps join those clay particles. Flip. Uh, serves actually a few roles, helps the clay adhere, but it also helps prevent air being trapped in there. Air being trapped in could be problematic. I'm going to come in with that coil. I'm not going to just slap it on. I might trap air when I do that, so it looks more like this. I'm going to start sticking it on. An extra slip kind of squishes out. Then, a little pinch compression like this. And if things are really wet and slippery from all the slip, you might just let that chill a little bit before you try and smooth it out more. If I tried to smooth it on a really wet area, my fingers are sliding over the clay, not doing anything, right? So that's not going to really help you. Once it sets up enough, though, then you can go in and you smooth it down like this first. And then you come back and smooth it up like that. Then at that point, you start paying attention to the wall angles and thickness. If I wanted to add a lot of height, couldn't I have used more clay and done a wider section? But what's critical with that is that slab that I'm adding on is overlapping. It's not just sitting on top. And the clay's thick enough. So when I do the smoothing and pinching, I'm not actually losing thickness and resulting with something too thin. Um, if any of you have a pot that is pretty good but there's thin spots, you can add clay. If you add clay to a thin spot, let's say you have a dent or something and you can't quite push it out because it's too thin, you can score and slip and add on clay. Just make sure anytime you do that the clay you're adding is really, really soft. So that way you can kind of spread around in there. So what I'm going to be doing next with this is, um, I'm going to let you guys go, but I'm going to continue smoothing and shaping this so it's the angle that I want. Then after it sets up, I'm going to level the rim. And then my other component, I'm going to match the diameter and join them. Okay?